Okay guys, so back another kitchen video. Yes, I know, you're probably getting boring by now. Um, well, the park by my place is shut down, so no more bashing there for a while. I got kindly told to F off by the parks people the other day, so I'm not gonna go back there until they say it's fine. I do not want a fine of $200. Anyways, so what we're doing today, um, I think I mentioned in the last few videos that <clears throat> I was going to be replacing the uh, connecting rod and wrist pin and uh, crank bearings in my Pro 15 here, which I'm sure you guys have seen enough of by now. But for some reason, the idiots at the post office or wherever keep losing my shipment of bearings. So for the fourth time, I've had to reorder them. Now, these ones weren't replaced all that long ago. At least don't have a lot of runtime on them, anyways. So we're just going to run with them for now until the new ones get here, whenever that is. So for now, we're just gonna pop the head, pop the back cover off, and change out that worn out connecting rod, because it has got a lot of slop in it. That's one of the reasons why I've been driving this truck. I've been driving the T-Max, um, and the other GT um, is because of that. I don't want the rod to snap, I'm telling you. That freaking homemade fuel that I make, that 0% stuff. Oh my cat's down here. Hello cat. Watch out. Go your food. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I hear you complaining. Anyway. So that's the homemade stuff there. You guys can kind of see it. Anyway, so it burns extremely, extremely clean. For sure how many gallons this engine has through it, which is unknown because I did get it used. Okay, let's get into here. My cat was just pestering me, as usual. She always wants food. It's like, I just fed you, and you're still hungry. But then I put down food, and she won't eat it. Cats, they're cute. Anyway. So, yeah, the bearing ordeal here has kind of pissed me right off, I can tell you that. So, like I said, I want to still drive this truck, and it sucks. Or it doesn't suck that I'm fixing it, but it sucks that when you order parts, um, you know. Oh, the COVID nonsense. Oh, the bearings are, we lost them. And it's like, well, how the frig did you lose them? I ordered three sets and you keep losing them. What the hell? Okay, so. <coughs> excuse me. There's our back plate. And starter shaft. Now, I think I've mentioned in the past that there is a uh, thin plastic gasket that goes here and they're clear and they're really hard to see them and if you don't notice it's there it'll fall off and you won't understand why your engine has an air leak issue after okay so hopefully you guys can see what i'm looking at here my dollar store tripod is literally falling apart so i ordered another one there's the inside of the engine there as you can see it's nice and clean if you guys can kind of trying to point everything here so you guys can kind of watch a little better there you go all right, so we're gonna pop out the sleeve. <clears throat> Yoink. And we're gonna be reusing the same piston since it's still fine. <coughs> Sorry about all that coughing and racket. Freaking, it's very dry here today. Throat's dry. Pull our piston off. And someone was going on about me using pliers and I said, well, I'm not actually forcing anything, I'm just using it because it's easier to get in there with my, without uh, sticking my fingers in there. So it looks pretty good in there, as you can see. Not bad at all. And this engine has been run with that same homemade fuel with no after-run oil for the past two years. Just as an experiment, because people keep going, oh, you know, clots will gum your engine and it'll freaking, you know, make a mess in there, blah, blah, blah. Wah, wah, all that other garbage. So I'm like, okay, well, challenge accepted, as you know. I will not add any after-run oil at all and see how it is within two years. <coughs> and in two years, it looks like it's new still. So I'm very happy with that. Okay. Shift you guys over. How's it going? All right. <laughs> so we got a new... Get out of that, boy. New connecting rod. So that's the part number there. That is it? 3224. So that's for the connecting rod. I already did drill a hole in the top. Um, 
the drill bit I used was extremely, extremely friggin' small. Like, you need a pin vise to hold it. Like, that small, like the smallest drill bit you can actually get. Because people kept asking about it. <coughs> so, yeah. Anyways. Got that. And got... Our caster oil, which I'm going to use to put it back together with. Oh, yeah, here's the part number for the wrist pin in case anyone's interested. 4031. Uh, need a knife. And. Yeah, so. That's the deal there. Get out of there. All right. And uh, I'm just going to clean this piston off here so you guys can kind of. Got the idea, but yeah, I kept getting people complaining. Oh, castor oil, man! It's like, well, yeah, it's a great lubricant. And honestly, with the clots and it's degummed and all that other nonsense, the stuff doesn't varnish up like at all. I haven't had any issues so far. Um, I've been using the uh, diesel airplane engines, which you guys have seen before, probably. It looks like my countertop's dirty. It's just I think I've mentioned before that someone is asking. It's the idiots that used to live here used to hack things up on the counter. Maybe even people, I'm not sure. Anyways, so we're going to look at our piston here. You grab the connecting rod, you guys, in frame. Yeah. And you grab it. It might be hard to see on camera, but it has a ton. You might even be able to hear it. Yeah, it's kind of... Yeah. You can hear that. That's how bad this connecting rod is. It shouldn't sound like that at all. All right, so our piston, it's got a little scuffy there. I think that was just from some dirt. But we're going to, this new connecting rod is a little different than the old one. This one has a groove down the center. This one does not. It also doesn't have any taper at the bottom either, which is kind of a strange. Yeah, you can see what it looks like on one side compared to the other. See that? This rod looks like it's a little thinner too. Oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, it's a little thinner in all sorts of directions here. Okay, well, that's fine. Um, sure, it won't blow up or anything like that. Now, we're going to get that our new pin and clip. That tiny little clip out of there, if I can. They're a pain in the ass because they're so friggin' small. I'm just going to gently get at it. You need like a really micro fine set of pliers to do this sometimes. Hang on a second, I'm gonna grab myself a pick and try that. Alright, well after about five minutes of fussing around, I got the old one out. Kinda distorted it, as you can see. Bit of a bummer. Um, you can order new clips, like a pack of three of them from Traxxas, I believe. So I might even just do that. <clears throat> Uh, just to have a couple extras on standby here. I said it's freaking really tedious trying to film putting those things back in. If you ha get yourself a big Ziploc bag, I think I talked about that before. Because when you're trying to put these stupid things back in, they go bang and they fly away, and you know, then you're screwed basically. So, like I said, you can't run without it. <clears throat> um, yeah, okay, so we're going to, because we don't know that this well this connecting rod like I said this new one doesn't have any um, any uh, markings on it what we're gonna do just so we know direction of where everything went so we're just gonna take and just put a little scratch in it all right doesn't have to be anything serious just a little a little nick in there nothing really and that way we know for next time when we take it apart what way the piston came back out because if you put it back in wrong it's worn to the sleeve in a certain direction and if you don't do that well, you can have issues. So, we're gonna take some some clots, castor oil, the blob in there. There's our new pin. And the pins do get worn out. Uh, if you are gonna replace it, replace them as a set, um, preferably. That uh, pin didn't even want to come out of there barely. Because they do get egg shaped after a while and uh, kind of start to get shitty, so uh, the best thing is to do is replace them. 
yeah, you can see there. Let's leave that there so we know. But you can see how shiny that one is. And if you look at this one, you can see how worn it is. You can see those, and you can feel those little grooves with your fingernail. I left my thumbnails long so I get that clip back in there. That's about the only reason. But you can feel that grooving on there <coughs> when they get old like that. So there's our old rod. It's got a hole drilled in it, just like my other, like the one I'm putting back in. I do that myself, like I said, with a tiny ass little drill bit. You put some oil in those wrist pin holes. Some oil in that wrist pin. Like I said, you don't want nothing to go together dry. These are the highest stress parts. I'll throw another little shot in there for good luck. People keep asking, well, what do you drill holes in the top of the connecting rod for? Well, simple reason is because there wasn't one, and that little hole there is to allow oil into the top of the rod. And if it's not there, the rod will eventually just seize to the freaking connecting rod, and then bad things can happen. Oops, there we go. Okay, so you guys can see there if you take and you just these parts are brand new so they're kind of tight there we go oh much better that's a thousand percent better right there <laughs> let's try it again perfect no sloppiness awesome all right so uh we're gonna put that clip back in but because i'm limited to camera space uh i'm gonna pause while i do that because it takes probably about 20 minutes to get these stupid things back in sometimes but uh, like i said um if you can get yourself a really, really fine set of like jeweler's pliers, that's the best thing to use and try to roll the clip in. Like I said, they're a big pain in the ass. Um, but I'm gonna pause while I do this because like I said, limited camera space here. So uh, just give me a moment, guys. I'll be right back. Like I said, a big Ziploc bag. Um, that way, if uh, your clip does go flying away, you catch it in the bag rather than losing it forever and pissing yourself off to no end. Because unfortunately, they only give you one clip in the pack. They should give you two just in case you fuck up like I do sometimes. All right. Clip. Oops. G clip, piston, and connecting rod goes in there. I'll be right back because you guys won't be able to see what the hell I'm doing anyway. All right. So that was 15 minutes of me talking to myself and biting my freaking tongue trying to get the damn thing back in there. But success have prevailed. So that, you can see the pin, oops, sorry, you can kind of see the clip, right? You can see it in there, it's, they're freaking tiny. Um, now, what you want to do is grab like your little Allen keys and just, you don't want to crush the spring, because you don't want it to fall out, because if it falls out, it'll completely doof the motor, right? So, you just want to kind of push, you can use a pick too if you want, mine's kind of screwed on the end, but whatever. You just want to kind of, you know make sure the springs in there and then from the opposite side and depending on what kind of engine you have because some of them have two clips and if that's the case it's a more of a pain in the ass and then just push from the other side of the pin you don't have to force it but you want to apply a little bit of pressure there just to make sure that that clip is fully seated because if it's not and you push it'll fly away so perform that inside of a ziploc bag and then just kind of, you know, you're not trying to distort it or trying to fuck it up, but, you know, make sure it's in there. Because, like I said, if that clip comes out, well, goodbye. That's it. Your engine's done. <laughs> it'll just, it'll destroy the cylinder. It'll take out the the, the piston. It'll <coughs> often take the head out when it goes. Yeah, it'll just destroy everything, so. But that was uh, a connecting rod I did oh, almost three years ago maybe two and a half years ago, and you can see I just kind of just willy-nilly just drill, drilled it out, and everyone's like, ooh, it's going to fail, it's going to blow up, it's going to snap. Well, you guys have seen the amount of bullshit I put this motor through, and it hasn't, so. But, let's see here. Seal that weeble wobble it in there. Seal that. That's not good. See that? That's what happens when these get old. Um, and especially if you have something like a 3.3 uh, or 2.5, 2.5R, when they get old, <clears throat> especially because Traxxas and their infinite wisdom, uh, cut that big fucking groove. Um, I mean, it's fine. Like, if you look at this one, there's still plenty of meat left there. 
underneath that top pin bore. But then they went and drilled, they thinned out this area and they went and drilled a big, huge hole through here for lubrication. And that left very, very little meat there. So when that, when that pin, and this is soft aluminum, starts to get old, it'll start to hammer and it'll just, the piston will keep hammering the rod more and more and more. And then eventually what'll happen is that spot right here will break through and it'll split the rod into a v-shape and take the block take the piston out take out the cylinder and the whole engine with it uh, which is uh, the shits uh, there used to be a couple of dudes rick uh, from rb mods used to make an upgraded uh, uh, connecting rod there was uh, davis diesel was another good one i think there's another one after that i can't really remember what it was but um yeah that's that's a thing unfortunately but yeah, so there we go. I noticed, yeah, the uh, new rod is slightly... Oops, where are we here? Freaking drifting off into nowhere land. Slightly thinner. New rod's obviously on the piston. It's a little thinner that way. Well, I mean, it's not a whole lot thinner, but yeah, anyway. But like I said, if you look, the bottom, there is a taper. That, it's kind of hard to see on camera, but it's there. The new rod doesn't have that. That's kind of stupid. But anyways, so we marked our scratch. Maybe we'll make it a little bit more visible and mark it again. That doesn't hurt anything. Just so we know which way it goes and it comes out. Because if you put this in, like I said, you can put these in backwards. They will run either direction. But because that piston is worn to that cylinder in such a way that if you flip it uh, 180 degrees, what will happen is it will wear the piston out faster. I know that sounds ridiculous, but it's true. It will, because uh, now it's riding in an area that it's never really ridden before. Like on, on a new axis or whatever, I guess you want to call it. So it can kind of screw things up a little bit. But, uh, all right. So let's get this guy back together here. Here's our sleeve. Like I said, it's in very good shape still. It's still got, uh, you know, not a whole lot of pinch left, but it's still got some there. So it'll last for a bit until I get the new one, whenever that is. And... Uh, you guys that aren't on, on my Facebook, but uh, there's some of you that are and some of you aren't. Uh, obviously know that today, today, I scored a wicked part slot and some vintage cool shit for this Pro 15. Including a new piston and sleeve. A purple cylinder head. I don't remember what the make is, but it was a purple one. So it's purple as power, isn't it? Yeah. So, what we're going to do, let's see if I can... That'll stay there. We might just be able to pick up the camera so you guys can see what I'm looking at. Let's see. So put a couple drops of oil in that rear bearing. And some on that pit, on that crank pin right there. If I can actually hit it, I'll be doing... Oh, there we go. So going to put a little blob on there. Okay. Now, we've got 18 minutes in. So let's fucking motor here and get her done. You guys don't need to see me put the back plate back on, but maybe I'll just pause after it. I'll do whatever. Anyways, I'll figure it out. Okay, so we're going to put some oil up in that wrist pin area. Right. We're going to put some in that hole there. We're going to smear some on the piston. As you should. And a little in the sleeve. A little on the outside of the sleeve. And we're going to get that piston in. So we remember our scratch faces the outside now. So you can see the scratch when you take the motor apart. Let's see if I can do this with looking through the side here. I'm trying to get it so you guys can kind of see it, but it's also a pain in the ass because I can't see. So let's see if I can't. I'm trying to do my best with what I've got. And then, and then like that. So I'm sure you guys just saw that. And like that. Okay, then we're going to take our sleeve. And of course, like I said, there's a notch in the top that not, that uh, lines up a little pin in top of the uh, engine block here. And we're going to slip our sleeve down. And you're going to rotate the piston a little bit, like rotate it around a little bit, kind of jiggle the sleeve. And if you're really careful and you're good enough, like I am, It'll slip right together. And you send that sleeve home. Like that. There we go. Perfect. Okay. Excellent. 
We're doing great here. Now, what do we got for time here? We got 20 minutes. We got, we got a few more minutes, I think. All right, we're going to step our cylinder head back on. Make sure your uh, head gaskets are still on and in good shape and do not leak. Okay. Now we get the cylinder head buttoned up here. Uh, what I do replace the bearings, I will actually yank the engine out and uh, and uh, replace them on, on video for you guys. And of course, when that happens, whatever the fuck that is, maybe I'll have that nice purple cylinder head here and we'll just, you know, do the whole lot right there on the spot, you know. A nice purple cylinder head, freaking new bearings, new piston and sleeve, all that kind of good shit. And you guys will be able to watch it all. And we'll do a breaking video about it. So I haven't had time to break my freaking T-Max and I've been too busy working. And I have nowhere to go because every time I go somewhere, someone complains about the noise. I can't go to the park because that stupid fucking virus. That's ruining my freaking fun here. Sorry for all the coarse language, but it's irritating as hell. So we're going to put our back plate. Remember that thin gasket that goes there? It's still there. And you got to line up that little notch with the notch, or with the, uh, with the connecting rod. And you'll know when it goes in. You'll feel it kind of go click, and it'll turn the flywheel when you turn it. And let's go with our four screws. Oops. Come on, you bugger. There you go. Yeah, so this Pro 15 will be freaking sweet as. And uh, I'm going to port one of them. I have not, Well, you guys have seen the silver one that I've run before. But I'm going to port one of them and see how in the hell that turns out. Because I've never done it before. Well, not really much anyway, so... Not a professional like, uh, you know, RB Mods or uh, Robin from uh, ERCM or any of those guys. So, those guys are freaking all amazing. So, they've been a hell of a lot longer than me. They know a lot more than I do. Okay. One way bearing. In. There's some shit in it. They're on it. A little break clean. Little bits of dirt get in there and just kind of booger everything up. Okay, that feels good. And our starter. How are we doing here? We're still doing okay. Okay. And with these pull starters, it's a Traxxas, uh, Traxxas Wonder, another one of theirs, where they don't put a freaking retainer in the pull starter. And if you don't know any better, you'll go to remove that pull starter, guys. And that little tiny spool that's in there that holds your your, your rope will go boing, and it'll fly all over the friggin' place on you. Really, really smart move. So then if you're too impatient or don't understand or you lose something, that means that you have to go back to Traxxas. You freaking see a damn thing here. You buy another one. And last time I checked, these Pro 15 pull starters aren't that freaking cheap either. I think they're like 22 bucks. Freaking ripoff. And if you're curious, and I think uh, uh, Hybrid there, uh, Dimitri, uh, he mentioned uh, about the drill start video. If I could start this engine backwards, and I tried before I made a video about it, and I didn't make a video about it because it doesn't work. It will pop and fart and carry on, but it won't really run. It'll actually push the fuel back down the uh, into the tank. So everything should turn over nice and smooth. Absolutely perfect. Um, the fuel line is the the little stone inside the uh, the tank is plugged with crap. So I'm not going to try to start it right now. I'm going to flush that tank out. And I've already made a video about how to clean a fuel tank. So I'm going to do that to this. Uh, the glow plug is DOA. So I'm going to put a new one in, but I don't have another one on standby until tomorrow. But anyways, guys, um, hopefully that was uh, kind of exciting to watch or maybe you learned something. I don't know. Um, anyways, as always, thanks for watching. Keep on burning nitro out there. Cheers.